You already know what it is. It's your boy DJ Filthy Rich. Yeah, it's your boy DJ Big X. And this is the We Outside Show, We Outside Radio. And we got the one and only Honorable C Note in the building. Yes, sir. Hey, yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I man. Know what's going on? What's good, bro? Man, I'm happy to be here, man. Good. Good to have good, you, man. Good, man. Around two legends, man. Listen, man. Three legends. Hey, man. You know the cipher's complete now. <laughs> it's a big trial. Oh, hey, man. Yeah. In it. Yeah. So, um, you're a super producer. You right. know, a lot of people know that. For those who don't know, your resume is really extensive, so I'm not going to ask you the basic questions like, what records did you do? Just yeah, Google that. this man, bro, and you're going to be looking for a long now, time. Now, nah, you got to ask him. You got to let him. No, agree. I appreciate the Google, man. He Google. Do your Googles. <laughs> new level is my shit, though. Like, <laughs> if you just want to start with a standout, new yeah, level is you, my, you know, my joint. You know, I love new level, man. Yeah. New level, like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but we're talking about, I want to talk about Honorable C Note, the artist, first. Because I know we talk about the production a lot. We'll get into that. But you have a new project out right now called Signs 3. Yes, sir. That you introduced to us yesterday. Right. And I love this project because I like the direction. And I'm going to be honest. When most producers, right, when you produce for so many other people, as DJs or as consumers, you assume that it's going their project is going to be in a certain direction right. when they come out as an artist. So I was super highly impressed by the approach that you took as an artist when I started listening to the project, I'm like, yo, this ain't like you not sliding on ops and trapping all day and popping pills. Like it's real substance with the music. So yeah. I want to talk about that, man. To talk about your approach to this project and just using it as an artist and the message you want to deliver in general. Uh, you know, I have um I'm a revolutionary at heart. Like, you know, I come from a small city, you know what I'm saying, located in Michigan, been hard in Michigan. So I seen the pores of the poor. And, you know, I never forget where I come from. Even though you come out here and um, you start doing better, you know what I'm saying? You know, Atlanta is the Mecca. So, of course, you start moving with the, the people in Atlanta. You start, you see bigger things. But I personally, from me being around and raised with my grandma, I never forget where I came from. So I'm a revolutionary at heart. Like, I seen the bottom. I seen the starving. Like, me and my grandma sharing senior meals and, just trying to figure out, you know, where the next job going to come from, how they trick us and, like, you know, make us hustle, you know, you know, get a little money in the house when ain't nothing going on. So a lot of people don't see that, but I've seen that. So my music has to depict that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's where my heart at. Okay. Okay. So um, you have a record on there called Warrior's Prayer, which is my favorite record on there. Talk about what inspires that record and what made you take that approach on that record too because it's different than everything else that's on there uh warrior's prayer is a um it's called courage it's about having courage you know the courage to chase your dreams the courage of changing the path when it's on your heart to change because that's who we are you are who you are like sometimes we run away from you know the ideas that come to us but that's who we are that's that's god talking to you like you know go this way and sometimes that way be very scared to take you know what i'm saying it's, it's like a like even coming down here you know with just a keyboard a hundred dollars in a beat machine just living off a of gym it takes courage to do that it takes courage to rap about something other than what you've been producing what people know you from a lot of that stuff take courage so you know me writing that song was me talking to myself also it's like it's a warrior's prayer like you know you, it's the battles that you have to fight and every battle is not physical mm. you know we have spiritual battles as well so you know it takes it takes that type of um courage to fight like a lot of people man you know you can be mean to another person but you don't fight the person that you see in the mirror to be better so right i say a lot about you to me you know what i'm saying so you can be the toughest person or the toughest nigga out here in the streets, but uh, to, you know, pick your own self apart and face that dude one-on-one -on -one in the mirror, is, it takes a lot of courage to do. That's, yeah, that's dope. Yeah. That's deep. So you're talking about uh, spiritual battles and things like that. Uh, we were talking off camera just about the music industry in general, bro. Like, I know that there's a – so there's there's levels to this fame – and um notoriety that comes so people who know music will know your songs right? right but it's not you're not like a household name quote unquote like a kanye or a loud boisterous person mm -hmm. is i feel like it's not because of talent i feel like it's because of how you move and i think that's on purpose so when you talk about a spiritual battle is there a reason why you're not as loud and you don't want to get to a certain level of notoriety because there's like you know i always be telling people like we've been in the industry for a long time i say yo 
I've been in rooms where I felt demons, and I mean that. Like right. in industry rooms, certain parties and certain atmospheres, you're like, yo, I don't even want to be here. I just feel uncomfortable. You ever feel like that? You know, when I'm in any room that I'm in, I feel like I'm the biggest person in the room. I don't care who in it. You know, um, the reason why I move the way I move because trailblazers never get, you know, we get to cut some scars first. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to be loud in any room I feel in. I'm like, I know who I am. I know what I do. And this is what I am. Like, I feel like we kind of get away from ourselves when we portray a character. You know what I'm saying? My character has always been cool, laid back, not really about the BS that come with it. You know what I'm saying? Just because you're going through that, I don't judge you. But I know me as a person, what I have to do and how I have to move. And whenever God opened that door for me to shine and do what I've been, uh, I need to do, that's when it happened. But as far as the hoopla and pointing the fingers and crying about a lot of stuff, I don't, as a man, I can't do it because it's like I see the bigger picture. I live, I live life in a bigger scope. And the reason why I move like the other way I move, because when you're humble, you can see everything. You know, I, I, I move in a 10-year increment. This In this 10-year, in this decade, I might be this. But in the next decade, I might be this. And it's because of what I learned in this decade. So I ain't rushed to get to this point in this decade. Yeah. Because I sat there and I learned and I watched everybody. Right. And I watched his mistakes. I watched his mistakes. <clears throat> I watched my mistakes. I listened to God. You know what I'm saying? I'm moving how I'm supposed to move because, you know, life is a marathon. It's not a um, It's not a sprint at all. So we sometimes we we uh quick to run and the things that dangle in our face we quick to grab and and it might not even be for you for real it might it might be like a you know it might shoot you up in the air but then your your fall gonna be harder mm-hmm. I rather my I rather my come up be gradual you know what I'm saying so I move at a gradual pace it ain't it ain't no you know sprinting to be hurry up and be with Kanye at my thing is I'm going to study Quincy Jones. I'm going to study Beethoven. I'm going to study all these things. So instead of having 10 people in the room producing with me, it's just C-Note. Yeah. So I figured out how to do it. So how, how important is it for you as a producer to, like, you know, study the greats? Like, for me, when I was producing, I always studied the music. You mm-hmm. know, I studied the guys that came before me, like you said, a Quincy Jones, a lot of the early producers. How, how important is it for you to study the music as a producer? It's real important. You know what I'm saying? Uh Something that um got me into it, you know, we'll start thinking we too old to do certain things, but Quincy Jones ain't find Michael Jackson until he was like 50. Right, right. that's a fact. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's stuff like that that made me like realize that time is not, it has nothing to do with it for real. Time is made up. Hone in on your craft and perfect it. Like, all right, you know, Quincy Jones, he started off playing a trumpet. He only had a couple of notes, and then he... He went moved to Minnesota. No, my bad. He moved to Seattle and met another guy that you know that taught him. And then he started moving. So it was just like, you know, me personally, we started off in the streets. We started off like doing like I I sold a hell of work to get my Motif Six. We didn't have Fruity Loops when I yeah. We was just talking about that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We ain't have Fruity Loops when when um I first started making beats. So I had to put my life on the line, pen, take the penitentiary chances to get my first keyboard. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that um Shout out to the motif. Yeah, the nah, motif. Nah, I mean six. for real. He's oh. like like seriously, like when we came up, you had to have money and <coughs> equipment. Yeah, you had that's to have That's why money. that's why you didn't see a lot of producers like when we first started here. Couldn't in afford it. Yeah, when we first started here in Atlanta, that's why you only had certain producers. It was only certain guys that had equipment. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now it's everybody has g- garage band. Everybody has some form of production FL equipment. Studio, yeah. Everybody got the the, the crack yeah. Crack VSTs, you know what I'm saying? So everybody got, you know. So me, you know, that's just. So so as a producer, what makes you, like, and I know you've been doing it for a while. I just, you know, I'm looking at your discography. So I'm saying, like, what makes you as a producer now, not just being you as C-Note, what makes you stand out as a producer? I just be me. I figured out my 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 blessing is in my difference. And my difference is being me. Right. Like, okay. you... Like you already cultivated, you was thought of two thousand years, thousand years before you even came. You was thought of. All you gotta do is walk your path. Right. You know, if we get we get distracted a lot. We got our phones, we got TV, we got things outside. But you wake up every day and tell yourself what you need to do. Dang, I need to work out. Dang, I need to. The more you listen to yourself, the louder that voice get. Yeah. Man, it, it, bro, it's really it's really funny because it's like. 
we dumb down versions of ourselves. Mm. Mm. And if you're not eating the right thing, listening to the right things, yeah, you are the dumb down version of yourself. And that's why I always say social media is like it's it's like social programming for real. Like, no, it is. The more you look at that, like a lot of the dumb stuff that be on Instagram, yeah, you start to act out and start to do some of the things that you see. So I saw um, something today, earlier today, actually, and they were saying that the way social media is programmed, especially the algorithm for us, I mean, people of our color, our culture, yeah. is to make us to be 30-year-old teenagers, to slow down the development and make us care about things that a teenager is thinking about at 30 you should not be thinking about. But like my post. It might have been. It probably was. <laughs> uh, yo, if you follow Big X on, on Instagram, he dropped a lot of jewels. But I think that was. It might, probably was on your page. But yeah, who, yeah, bro. You know, at the end of the day, who they going to hustle? If they don't, if they got you, if they, if they, if if you mature at the age you supposed to mature, who is they going to get their money from? Exactly. Right. Every nationality get their money from black people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're the biggest consumer in the world. We're the biggest consumer in the world. So if we get you to start waking up and realizing what we're doing, then who's going to feed us? Because we done made our people so smart. They're they don't. They not going to buy certain type of clothes, cars. They, they understand that it means nothing in this lifetime. So when we when we stand on our own two feet and realize and start looking at our neighborhoods and realize, hey, man, you know what? I'm tired of living like this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm tired of going to other places and seeing how good they live in. They ain't. When we realize that, who they gonna hustle? They can't yeah. hustle us at that point. They can't. It's over. We the biggest group of people Game that over. get hustled. Straight up, straight up. We, we the group of people like, even if your favorite rapper got twenty million dollars in the bank, all right, you know how much he made his boss? Exactly. Two hundred million. Nothing. Right. At least. Yep. Right. Ten. So that mean he made ten percent of what he made another man. Mm hmm. Oh, man. You know, happy, I don't know how much, I don't be counting niggas' pockets, you know what I'm saying? But, but, I, but, I, but, I, think, but I just be, but, but I always, you know what I'm saying? I, I always kind of speak on that all the time with the guys. I always say, if, you know, if they pay you 10 million or 20 million, you got to imagine what they made. If, if they was if they was able to give you 10 million, right? they made probably four times that amount. Yeah, mm -hmm. you got to believe it. You see what I'm saying? You don't pay for four generations of them, <laughs> and now you only taking care of yourself for a decade. Right, and just yourself, because a lot of people are just throwing money <laughs> yeah, away. Like we were we're talking not fixing about. It. We can't fix up our communities with the type of money that we making. We can that we can show damage it though. Oh yeah. Oh, we do we do a lot of damage into our communities with the shit that we do, but you know the money that we making ain't enough money to fix it. Facts. Well, we we have a unity problem. You know, and again, I think that's part of the programming that they put is try to pit us against each other because we are stronger together. And so, we, you know, when we do stand together, we show that it's just hard to get. It's hard to get them together. Well, everybody want to be, you know, how niggas is. I'm the captain. Yeah, bro. I want to be the. You know, everybody got the brightest idea. But my thing is, is like, let's stop looking at the big picture when it come to us. Let's mm -hmm. look at the little people that's ready, willing to build and start with them and let that get big. Mm -hmm. So, so let me ask you this: um, You work with a lot of the greats, like Gucci, the Migos. You know, what I'm saying rest in peace, peace take off. Man, my and boy. So, um, and we're talking about like changing, like just the music, the environment, the whole situation. Now, working with that same caliber of artists, now, what direction musically would you take them if they came in the studio and they was on that negative vibe or that low vibration? Like I said, I don't make no other man do or see what I see. I just move how I move, and hopefully you'll see it. Like, when you the light, you ain't got to say much. You ain't got to do much. Right. They watch you anyway. You know what I'm saying? It's just I don't make nobody. It's God's grace that grow people. Ceno ain't doing nothing. But I'm, I'm a, a seed planter. Right. I mean, I plant seeds, and I keep it moving. It's not my job to make, hey, man, stop rapping about that. We damaging our people for the last 530,000 years, nigga. Is you, I don't do none of that. It's just like I'm in here, and if somebody is writing something that I, you know, I'm, I'm really kind of like against, I say a prayer about it right then and there, and it always changed. That mm. means I'm not in control of nothing. Mm. That was deep. I, okay. That's a good answer, right? Right. Because <laughs> we had – um. We had KRS One on the show and New Face, and we were talking about um, we really want to do an EP, uh, like a self destruction twenty twenty two. I think we were talking about that yesterday too, and I think the the hurdle is we want we want the people who have been the biggest 
advocates for violence in the community. Like, and they, they big artists and it's dope. And I'm not knocking that because that's I grew up on violent music. You know what I'm saying? I love violent music. Me too. It's I when love it's the time for music. music. Exactly. I love it all. I'm, I'm not I can't knock it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and I'm not knock knocking it. it. You can't no, knock but what I'm saying is if because you it take, has a place. It does. But if it you take those one. same people and made a record like that, I think it will be impactful because people will be surprised to hear that from them. Like if you heard Lil Dirk or Twenty One Savage making a positive record, I think it would throw people off in a good way. And I think it would be hard because they still have the skill set to do it. My mentality is like, let's say like they they have room to grow. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? They're my young brothers. You know, they got room to grow and they will grow. But let's say like it's a group of people that represent this type of music and it grows. And it grows so big that they can't ignore it now. Yeah. It's called, it's called starting your own way, mm-hmm. like having your like changing the narrative your way, not making like since you so hot right now, I need to borrow your light to make you say something because you it, the change start from with inside. Like you have to really feel that way to be that way. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes niggas ain't got over the um the trauma that comes with that life that we grew up in. That takes a lot to get over. Like me, you know, having people that got killed. Since I was 13, witnessing deaths at 13, 15, 17, 19, like you kind of like used to it now. You get numb. You get real numb to, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And when they yo people, like, you know what I'm saying? And then you you, you got to deal with the the stuff that you went and did. So now when you you going out here, like if you listen to Trap, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story about this young kid who his his father was locked up. And he end up, you know, rebelling against his mom, killing people. But you don't know the rules of the universe, the real rules of the, the real rules of the universe. You got demons on you now, mm-hmm. and if you don't know how to repent, they coming to get you. Mm-hmm. It just is what it is. It's the rules of the universe. So you got people that's that's dealing with those type of spirits that's inside of them, and they don't want to hear nothing. No positive person talking about you been doing too much hurt. Like it's time, you know. I just think the people that's builders. Need to start building. Mm. I can't worry about what nobody else doing. I can only build what Ceno gonna build. I always just want to keep that door open to them. Always. You gotta keep the door open. But the only always. way you can keep the door open is if you shine your light and they see it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we I can't, building, I can't really yeah, we gotta build it. Yeah, we, we build I can't it. I can't just, uh, just knock down the studio door and be like, hey, quit talking about that. <laughs> People look at you like you know what I'm saying. Nah, yeah, but no, I no. mean, but we are we are we are we are at a place right now where a lot of people are feeling like you know, from a DJ's and, and from a music perspective and an executive perspective, I mean, you know, the expectations are that they're looking for a change in the music and it has to start with us somewhere. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And, and we are the change. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's what Science 3 comes to. So the thing is not, I'm not going to judge nobody. I'm going to just shine my light. Right. And I'm going to try to attract as many as people as I can with my light. And if it, if it start working, good. And if it don't, I could die and I'm like, hey, bro, I did what you told me to do. Yeah. Don't sit me down there, man. <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday, so yesterday at New Music Monday, when you were performing, right before you perform, I no, I think after you perform, you said something that caught my ear, and you was like, "Man, I wanted to actually get up here because some like the internet, some of the stuff that's going on with the internet." And I didn't really catch all of it. I just kind of walked in. And I heard the end of it. And I was like, "I was like, man, I wonder what he was trying to expound on." When you were saying like it was certain things that was going on on the internet that people was being tricked by. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to see where the DJ's head was at. Like, like you know, the smoke and mirrors. You know, we get tricked a lot by the smoke and mirrors, right. but what things appear to be. You know what okay. I'm saying? We get tricked by the things that appear to be. So I wanted to see where the DJ's head was. That's why when I played that music, and you know, like people was like, "Yo, we really, really need this, or we like that." I'm like, right. "Yo." Okay, I went and tripping. Yeah, nah. Cause I be by myself a lot, bro. Like okay. I study music a lot. I be, like I be in my little, ho- I go in my little hole and I study music and I, you know, I figure things out. And even when I go out and I hear like when I go around people, they be like, "Yo, niggas ain't ready for this," or it's over their head. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm finna put it out, and then I need to figure out if somebody gonna like it. Or right. So, and then you know, you, people come to you be like, "Yo, we tired of it." I'm like, I know I went tripping. I'm listening yeah. to myself. I think it's a lot more DJs that's willing to take chances than people think, too. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, a lot of us, 
we we can't say that we want that music and then you give it to us and we don't play it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us like it. That's why we want to have you on the show so we can shine. This is just another platform to shine light on it because, mm-hmm, yeah. you know, we, we like that balance. Again, I love trap music. I love gangster shit. But we need something else too. You know what I'm saying? We just need everything. Yeah, because we can't go too, we can't be too conscious. No, nah, and we're not. No, we can't be. Not. Life is about balance. Science ain't really conscious. Science is just a, a tale of a person that's finding himself. Right. Without you know, that. I'm going through, I'm going through, uh, changes, you know, waking up to certain things, understand how how I'm getting hustled, understand, like, I'm a, I'm the type of person that hates to be hustled. I hate to be beaten in the game. <laughs> I don't care who it is, what color it is. When, if I'm playing the game, I do not, I will play that game 500 million times until I win. Right. You so once I, it. yeah, so once I start seeing the hustle and I start seeing who getting hustled, but nobody wants to, you know, nobody wants to listen. It's just like, man, you know, I'm a producer, so I'm going to figure out how to play the guitar, the flute. I'm going to make the best music in the world, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> like, Why is it called saying? Signs? Why Signs? Because those are the signs that I took to get here. Mm. I took Signs to uh, leave from Michigan, from here. Then I got off track a little bit. Then I followed the signs to lead me to fasting. You know what I'm saying? I used to be like 500 pounds. I'm back on the heavy side. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> I used to be like five, like way bigger than I am now. I'm back on my heavy side because it's kind of like I've been like traveling, going to Amsterdam, you know, plus six hours, oh, negative six shit. hours. It take time. You know what I'm saying? It take a toll on your body. So, yeah. But fasting helped me realize a lot of stuff, like like a lot, like a 30 day water fast. I didn't even know you didn't you can go that long without eating, but I took a 30 day water fast. I started hearing from God. I started. I started just noticing certain different things. A lot of things that I was attracted to, I wasn't attracted to it no more. So it's like, you know, it's, these artists, like, you start seeing oh. signs. You start understanding, like, bro, we are really part of this universe. Right. <laughs> like, at first, you know, you know, like, when you when you in it, you don't hear what people talking about. You don't see it. You don't. Like, I used to have an auntie, like, when I was depressed, I used to have an auntie that was all full of light and just happy. I hated when she came around. I used to be like, yo, she fake. Like, get away from me. You, know, you can't be that happy, man. It's impossible. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you in that trance, which a lot of us is in that trance, it's hard to see outside of that trance. Until you start fasting and getting rid of some of the stuff that you feed in your stuff, you start, like, you start coming up for air. You're like, hold on. It's like you... To shake certain stuff off, I'm like whoa, like yeah. But it's but it's a lot. But it's a lot of what you intake on a daily basis yeah, too. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I always tell people, what you see through the eye, you 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 know you hold on to forever. Yeah, it ain't ever going nowhere. Can't so, unsee it. No, you can't unsee it. Yeah. So you have to be very cautious about the things you let into your your psyche. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, especially in our lifestyle, boy. Because I DJ in a strip club three nights a week, boy. I see everything terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Let me tell y'all, man, it's hard to uh, uh, even get a wife because you don't see certain of the stuff that you don't see in the industry. It's just be like, yeah, it's hard to trust, man. I got I got a song called Unsee. It's the truth. I don't see some things that I can't unsee. You're right. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's just. But at the end of the day, you got to realize that you you create the world that you live in, right? And you do that by clearing out certain stuff. In your passageways, and that's not the easiest thing to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because 30 Especially days of straight water, you got to be strong. Yeah, man, I was just Real thinking fat. about that when I'm, he said that have, I'm having a lot of energy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That fat is energy. And, I, you know, I don't work, so I got to just, I can be at home in the bed all day for 30 days. You're losing two pounds a day for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then was, is there, like, uh, physical exercise involved with that, too, or is nah, it just? Sit down, bro. Sit down and just. Don't do this. Yeah. Just relax. Yeah, you can start getting them dreams, lucid dreams. You gonna see who the devil is. You gonna see all that. Mm. So I was looking through your um um your discography, and I seen you was on Jack Harlow back in eighteen, mm-hmm. like before the blow up. Mm. Right. Like, what was it like working with Jack Harlow now, and then then seeing his success now? Um, you know, KY uh KY engineering man. He he brought Jack from um, Louisville to um Atlanta. And you know anything KY KY has an ear that I trust. You know what I'm saying? He did a, a lot of the early two what two chain stuff, Wayne stuff, and he brought like a lot of my beats 
for me coming up first and putting it in front of Wayne in the Young Money situation. I got a lot of my placements with Lil Wayne through KY. So if KY tell me he rocking with something, mm -hmm. it's no questions asked. So when I seen Jack, he was like, he was a little nerdy looking, but he <laughs> he had bars though. But he right. was like, I'm like, oh, but he can rap though. Maybe if I, you know, I feed him some of these beats, you know what I'm saying? And he work hard. So I, I, I feel like if you come down to Atlanta and you don't get sidetracked, by the things that goes on in Atlanta, you come down here and you working. Every time I come in, in the studio, you in the studio, you got a chance. Mm -hmm. It'll happen for you. A lot of people come down here and get sidetracked by what's going on. It's easy too. <laughs> too easy, man. Yeah. And very, it's very enticing too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you know, they out here. Yeah, when you come down, when you come down here, you just got to be on business. I knew Jack was gonna go crazy. So what? Um, when you like. From working with an artist, do you think that the work ethic is what's the most important part of a, a artist success? You can't pass work ethic. The work ethic, the work ethic, make and break superstars from regular talent, man. Because I preach that, I always say, man, if, if I like, and, and for me, I had been doing it for a long time. So when I actually seen Future, and I seen his work ethic, that's what made me go, yo, that, he gonna be a star. I knew, I knew soon as I seen how he like, like this guy went to the studio every day. Mm -hmm. He did like three, four songs, five, six songs every day. And when I seen, I was like, at that time, and I've been in the studio with a lot of cats, I seen nobody work like that in the studio. You know and I mean? they quit. They coming like this. Gucci do the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's the first person I yeah. saw. When Gucci did that, I'm like, huh? Yeah, Gucci would do seven songs in a day. Yeah, I had never seen that before, and I was like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's like man you know what we'll it'll get to the point where like we'll be in the studio i'll be like man i'll bet you i'll make i'll make four beats before you make four four songs well let's hurry up and do it then i'm like man you just can't say anything though it got to be five songs let's do it yeah. so you know when we was working in the brick factory days that's kind of you know like you know i can make beats like this I wake up and any any type of beat you want, it's gonna be fire too, guaranteed. Mm, talk and talk. Yeah, yeah, that's cause that's what I do every day. I make five, six, seven beats a day. You put your ten thousand hours in, so you I put way more than ten thousand yeah. hours in. You're professional. As yeah. a as a producer, right? Yeah. What was it what was the what was the what was the point when you was like, yo, I know what I'm doing? Uh I would say in two thousand maybe not even that long ago. Like 2017, I figured it out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Wow, it was kinda, for real? Yeah. I was in it for, I've been making beats since like 98, but 2017, like after I had a couple of hits, mm -hmm. I was still trying to figure it out. But when I started getting in the studio with people like Gucci and, and actually in the studio with people that was winning, mm -hmm. I started listening to the beats that, that they was picking. And I was like, oh, I could this whole it. time <laughs> I've been like being hard. To, it, but it made me consistent. But this whole time I'm like, yo, I was thinking like, like the beats that that they be picking, they gotta be the hardest beats in the world. Right. And then you get in the studio, you like, oh, this is what they listening to? Like, oh, I'm gonna go crazy. I'm gonna, you know, <laughs> like yeah, like I'm gonna I'm gonna go retarded. Like you know. So what do I'm you saying? think you were overproducing? Yeah, I was. I was overproducing, yeah. overthinking. I didn't have enough. Um, I ain't believe in myself enough. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like I was. I was just overthinking because, like you know, I come from the school of. Just Blaze, Kanye West, uh, DJ Toon, Shorty Red. You know what I'm saying? Like I was listening, to, I was listening uh, to Justice League. I was listening to all they beats, and they, you know, they beats were sounding like big and prolific. Boy, you so really I'm thinking, just name like, my favorite group of producers, huh? <laughs> you just name my favorite group of producers. These are the producers that I sit up there and I, and, you know, I listen to. Like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because they joints sound like movies. Like that's why my my beats yeah. sound like movies. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because it was like. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, man, like I, like the beats that they listening to, it got to be on that level. And I just realized that, like a lot of people, it's only a certain few people that's consistent like that. One person might make a beat, but it take him like two days mm. to make a five beat. I make them back to back. But what what, what, <laughs> you know what, what, produ what producer when you was coming up, right? Like when you first started, like when you was really coming up and you was making your own sound. What producer did you lock into that you was like, yo, I like his, I like his style the best. It was definitely Ye. Mm -hmm. It was right. definitely Ye and Just Blaze. Everything of the rock. Exactly. It was going so crazy, bro. Like Just Blaze is that guy. It was Just Blaze and Kanye. But when mainly I mainly Just Blaze, I ain't but, gonna lie. But when I hear the stuff you did, when I hear the stuff that you have done, I hear I don't hear as much of that influence though. 
Right, because you hear a lot of Southern, because it was Just Blaze and then my style. Because you got to understand, I was making beats too, though. Okay. Like in the, so in the 90s. Kinda, you, okay, so you so you took your influence and added it to what they had going on. So, you know, they, they had a lot of sample based records. A lot of, and then, uh, and a lot of um, sample based records they were uh, sampling was like from Soul. But then sometimes they go to the classic rock side. So, what that made me go do, I went and studied classic rock for a while. Then I study orchestra for a while. Then I study, then I study other things that made me my own sound. Like back in the days, we, just because I look up to that person, don't mean I want to make beats like them. Right, right, right. Okay. It's like they did something to kind of like influence me. And, and T Mix, my bad, bro. Mm. T Mix is a big, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All that old Suave House. Yeah. <laughs> oh, T Mix was the man back in the day. Oh my God! <laughs> Come on, stop playing. People, so yeah, wait, when wait, you wait, listen wait. to stuff like that, you like, man, wait, wait, one second, man. It's it's some monsters out here, bro. Cause you, you people forget about the whole squad I sound too. Like I think a lot of time it, it get overlooked. It grew me up. That's that's what grew me. Yeah, the whole Suave house grew me. Tila, A. Paul, and M. J. G. We grew up off of that. They had the best beats too. Oh, yeah. What that was, that, real, that was real street music, back man. Then. What? So it, that's that's cool too. So you being from Michigan. You really had you were exposed to everything then, right? Because you know a lot of people are regional, like Cali people, kind of just grow up on Cali music. East Coast, yeah. we kind of just stuck in our bubble. But Michigan, I know, like Chicago, like everything. Y'all get to hear everything. DJ Quick, Dr. Dre, yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I can I can name every producer from every side. That Dr. Dre is the reason why my drums hit hard. So I might take the soul that Kanye and Just Blaze was doing and slap it on some. Dre have a snare hitting so hard. Yeah. I could just pump it through the speakers. And then I'm like, I listen to the South music and they claps is kind of like behind. I'm like, no, I like this. So I'm going to take this with this and make this me. You know what I'm saying? See, that's the, I think that's the, my favorite thing about producers. It's like watching a mad scientist or like a recipe, like a chef. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're taking pieces and put the right ingredients in there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be making magic, man. I love, I love that. Love it. I love that. You know, just being a music, you know, as DJs, right? We're not mixing to words. We mix into beats. Yeah. So we study in beats. You know what I mean? So I be knowing people beats. I, I'm like, oh, I know who did that. I know mm -hmm. who did that. And we start training our ear. That's why a lot of DJs end up being dope producers, too. And vice yeah. versa. A lot of producers end up being good DJs. Of course. Yeah, bro. Yeah, Manny French, he was a dope DJ. But then he was one of the hardest producers ever. Yes. Yeah. And consistent. Very cons yeah. Consistency is a big thing, man. Anything in life, consistency will make you win. Oh, yeah. If you consistent, you winning. Who preaches in anything? That? Who preaches that? Probably you. <laughs> man, that's, no, for real, man. That consistency. I, everything that I learned from here, I learned from the block, man. No cap. Like, mm. like serving things. Like when you out there every day and they count on you, you're gonna get a consistent base hey, of man. people coming to spend money with you, man. You gotta get a Guaranteed. check. That, and that's what make a dope dope dealer. That's what people forget about dope, like dope dealers. Like, yeah, if you call your weed man, he always got some green. You not gonna be thinking about nobody nah, else shopping around. If you go get your hair cut and he get and he crispy you every time, you're not going to cheat on your barber. Right, Thanks. consistent. He consistent. Right. He crispy every you every time. <laughs> man, if you get somebody and they braid your hair and it look fire every time, and you you know what I'm saying, you're not gonna go nowhere else at all. You gonna blow them up, man. Where you at, man? Yeah. But I heard you um, earlier when you was talking about this, and I wanted to ask you. And you was talking about instrument instrumentation in the in the music, like you know, just having like different players, like um, like a bass player, a keyboard player. Like, how important is that into your music, opposed to like every, like just being? Most people just make beats on out of machines, whatever comes in the machines. All right. Like, do you use a lot of instrumentation in your music? All my music is instrumentation. I don't. I rarely sample. When I do sample, it'd be cold, but I rarely sample. If I do sample, it's because me and the artist had a conversation that, that day, and it made me remind me of something that I listened to back, you know, when I was younger. Like, oh, yeah, let me go put I got a folder of samples. It was, it's like 10 gigabytes. And I know y'all is terabytes, y'all, DJs. <laughs> but I got, like, old, old songs that I done collected mm. for years and years. And this thing's like 10 gigabytes, bro. Mm. And I go back, and I know every song in there. You know what I'm saying? That I done study. So, yeah. And so what I did was instead of sampling them, I went and did. And I'm like, okay, this person had a, a Rose. He played this. The bass played this. 
the keys played this. Mm-hmm. Everybody, did, everybody, everything had its own room. Right. You know what I'm saying? That, and that made me figure out, all right, now I'm going to learn how to play the piano. Right. Now I'm going to learn how to play the guitar. Now, next thing I'm going to learn how to play is the flute. I'm going to learn how to play the violin. Like, this is what I do for a living, so I'm going to learn how to play all that. I love that. Right. Yeah. Instrumentation. And, that, and, that's, yeah. and, that's, and that's important, too. You know what I'm saying? Because I think a lot, even when you sample, because I sampled for a long time, and I knew how important it was, like, just being able to bring just some live instrumentation to the music. It just brings, change. You know what I'm saying? Cause it brings life to it. Because when you loop, you just loop. That's just it. Mm-hmm. It's not going to change unless you bring another piece of the record in and make a change. But for the most part, that loop is there until you bring something else into it to make it. Man, you know, you know, you can't really, you can't, you can't really um, duplicate live instrumentation, bro. You can put, you can sample it the best. You can, but those vibrations from what, when you playing or how you felt that day, that's yeah. And when you know that's how to play that, that's you. That, yeah. You went through that today. Right. Music you know, when is you emotion. The keys, yeah. You went through that that day. It's that's emotion how, in that's there. That's how you feel. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't duplicate that. Now you can like copy and paste it, and it could be what you get now. A whole bunch of the same stuff that you tired of hearing. But when you like you hear something like courage, you know I went through that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I woke up. I was waking up at five o'clock in the morning listening to uh. Maverick City, every morning, they got a song called, I will wait on you. I'm running at 5 o'clock in the morning, right after a fast. I ain't had sex. I ain't no smoking, no drinking, no eating. Fast, real. A real fast. I had a real fast. real. A real fast. I'm running nine-minute miles. Yeah. What? A big, I'm running nine-minute miles off of, like, not having sex, like, just off of clearing myself. I'm, like, doing some superhuman stuff. How? You, I mean, but you ain't eating. Huh? Right. No, I was eating. I, the only when I came off of my see every December, mm-hmm. I don't eat nothing for thirty one days going into the New Year's. I don't eat nothing. It's just I just drink water, and so when I introduce food back into my body, it's you know little light salads and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's hard keeping the weight off. Like when you look, when you see yourself look like something, you want to keep it. But after your fast, you're going to gain some weight back. So. Yeah. I'm running trying to keep it off, but I was like, the only thing I'm gonna I'm gonna add back after this fast is is food, and you know, and that's it, food and sex. I didn't even <laughs> add, I didn't add sex, bro. But let me tell you, that's what had me realize that we superhuman when you keep that in. Like when you that nut retention is real, man. I was running <laughs> nine minute miles, bro. I was really doing that. Man. And I and I ain't ran a nine minute mile since I had some since I hit something. Like, you know what I'm saying? I hit something like on Valentine's Day. After that it was over. Ugh. My nine minute mile runs was back to normal, right? It wasn't even normal. I ain't even feel like running no more. <laughs> wow. It just took everything. It was like you know, like that. I, I I know what it felt like to be super uh, superhuman for a while. Mm. I was getting it. That's discipline, though. That's discipline. Well, sometimes you know, us as a producer, but I'm a scientist too, though, man. Like if you ask my mama what I wanted to be when I was a kid, it's a scientist. So when you start uncovering secrets of yourself, and you start seeing things that you know wouldn't know was possible for you to do, you start looking for more things to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're like, hold on. So if I don't do this for a while, let me see what it happened. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'll be laying down and my eyes closed, but I can see I can see stuff. Like, I can see the outline of stuff with my eyes closed. I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, we really bigger than what we... Yeah, you're not even using you're not even using a, 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 the filth of your brain. You know what I'm saying? We really bigger than what we... And this is not no book that I read, bro. This is something that I went through. We really bigger than what we pertain to be like we have a big cap on us yeah yeah like we have a ceiling that we you know what i'm saying like you can push past that ceiling like when you running you think you ain't that oh i never do this you start pushing back oh i can do it just think about it like how many ceilings been pushed past since back in the 1900s you think people in the 1900s think we'll be flying planes right exactly no no <laughs> they Man, you got to think. I mean, if you like me, I remember seeing everything we looking at right now was like on the Jetsons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> crazy. Everything we doing right now was mm-hmm. on the Jetsons. Even mm-hmm. something as simple as the cell phone. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, uh, like, uh, like uh, the, 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 the camera FaceTime. Oh, uh, that's Jetsons all the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. FaceTime. You would never think of that. Even texting. You you weren't even like in the nineties texting. 
Right. What are you talking what? about? See, I came from an era when, like, producing, you actually had to FedEx your beats to somebody. What? Yeah, bro. Yeah. So just See, think about fire. the limitations that we put on ourselves because of what we don't know. Yeah. And and why we not pushing ourselves. Mm. Why is it so hard for you to 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 get rid of the things that are normal just to try something that's abnormal just to see how supernatural you are? Like we supernatural beings. Like I know this for a fact we supernatural. Yeah, this nigga's mad motivational. Yeah. <laughs> Dead serious. Like for real, man. Yeah. We, we, hey, you ever seen like your homeboy like you ever do something like in a like ever got in a fight with a whole bunch of people and you did something that was like so amazing and they say, Oh, they blame it on your adrenaline? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well if you can have that all the time. Mm. That would be crazy. But you can have it all the time. You just gotta tap into it. You are a godlike person, like like you are created in the image. Especially when you don't black. sleep on that. Especially when you're black. So so being a so being a producer and you're talking about being creative, what what other things you do you do creatively? Like I know a lot of people like for me being a producer, I like to do Photoshop, I like to do movies, I like to I'm a creator. Right. So what else do you like to do outside of just making beats? Everything, bro. I'm just a creative person. Like it's not I can I can see anything and just like my mind the way my mind works is is is, is creative. Like I'm I'm one of those crazy creatives too. Like I can't be around people that long. Like I gotta separate and be by myself. <laughs> like I'm one of them I'm one of them niggas, man. Like, you know, after I after I be around people for a while, I gotta go find me a, a space where I can be to myself. Ask anybody, bro. Like it'll be a room full of the studio is full of people and they enjoying themselves and seen on in the corner. Yeah. Uh -huh. To himself. Because I, I don't even know what's going on. It's just like, I just need to, all right, we done half of, we done did a hard song. Now I'm going to go over here by myself. I need that space. You know? Yeah. I need my space. What's my space? My space? <laughs> you know, it's funny. So I'm the same way, but I'm a DJ and a host. So people think like, oh, man, he's such a people person. He like to party. But the people who know me or around me, they always say like, yo, where you going after this? I'm going home. Damn, you ain't going? Nah, bro. Definitely interesting. I'm done. Like, I come do my thing. And I go home, bro. Yeah. I got a off a dope ass office in my crib. I'm an animator. Mm -hmm. I be in there making cartoons, drawing, anything, anything, fiddling around with stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I, like, I think, yeah. but I think creative creative people like to be at home because I think they met a they created a creative setting space. For that's self. exactly. You know what bro. I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So that's you, exactly you, like, like like for me, I can go from this room. I might be in this room creating and doing something. <laughs> then I go to the other room. I got a whole another creative space that I do something else in. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I got I got a whole I got groups of people that that we be creative. So I got a group of people we'll shoot a video with. I got group of people that I make music with. I got a group of people that I make cartoons with. With, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We got a, a banger. We did a, a, a voice over um, Grand Theft Auto, and it blew up. Bloody Freddy. Uh, when me and my boy Israel. So glad you brought this up. And um, <laughs> we, we just, <laughs> you like you know, like if Freddy Krueger was a blood and he rapped, and his his <laughs> his albums, bro, literally pay for my bills to this day. And it's just me acting like. Freddie. Freddie. And Freddy. they're hard, bro. Like <laughs> it's hard, bro. Ain't it? Listen, this this how I met him. I reached out to him because I'm a yeah. big fan of Bloody Freddy and Israel. Yeah. So I seen it. I used to watch all Israel videos, bro. And funny. I kept seeing Bloody Boy, and I kept funny. He had a beach in the background out here. Honorable Cino. I'm like, yo, Cino is doing these beats. This is crazy. So you know, I got the Roach Motel cartoon. I was like, man, I, I need you on this, man. Yeah. Something because Bloody Freddy is crazy. So the fact that you were able, even able to play around, quote unquote, like that. And be able to make money. To me, that's the win. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you can create what you want and have a good time making it and live off of that, you won in life, bro. Man, that cre that created me to be like, oh, like y'all like this? All right, <laughs> like, 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 honestly, Bloody Freddy is like he say the gangster stuff, but he a conscious rapper too. Like he a, like exactly. if you listen to what he's saying, he's he's a conscious rapper, but he he kind of like stuck in between both of the worlds. It's like he got a mind. But he got to do this to survive. Like, that's who he is. And people accepted <laughs> him, bro. And he's Freddy Krueger. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I love that. And people yeah. accepted him. So I started like, yo, he accepted that. And I was like, <laughs> me being me for real. Like, I was sucking, you know, yeah. in two of those worlds. Like, the old me and the new me having the battle. It's a fight, too. It's a real fight. So it's like a... You know, figuring yeah. it out. Yeah, I love that, bro. That's my favorite thing you've ever done. Like everything is dope, but that bloody Freddy, bro. Yeah, that's the one for me, man. Um, 
So we ran out of time, but yo, it, I'm I'm glad to have you on the show, bro. Oh man, it's been a pleasure, man. Absolutely. Yeah, I wish I wish we could do about another thirty minutes because we for was, real we had just got <laughs> into now, the conversation. We're gonna bring you back, man, for real, oh, for, for real, because you always working anyway. Always, yeah, always finding something new to do. Dope. Yeah, and I think I think it's time for uh you know us as black people to have those Joe Rogan type conversations, man, where we talk about the food and. Uh, a lot of the things that, you know, like, you know, with us that we go through, like I just read something and you're like, man, it take you to eat six oranges to eat one orange from, you know, to get the, the same vitamins from one orange back in the 80s. Yeah. What? It'll take you to eat six oranges now. That's how much they manipulated the fruit. That's why you love to keep eating because you're not getting all the nutrients. That's a whole nother conversation. Like I'm a creative creative and I got to read books. Like I can't be around a person that talk about um, what's on TV all the time because mm -hmm. I need, I need you to read me some stuff that I need to go research. See, you know what see, I'm saying? See, I want to talk about a lot of that, but I know how they shadow ban me and, Oh yeah, they do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I my, my page it. is definitely shadow. I, I just I just so went through his. that. I just went through that for two years. So it's like they're just now letting me get followers again. So I'm trying to be on <laughs> my best to, behavior. And they now need we got you a as bigger, dumb as possible, man. And now we got a bigger it's platform. So That's up. They need you as dumb as possible, man. So let's do this. You know, before you go, um, can you recommend three books to our audience? Uh, yeah. Uh, Atomic Habits. Crazy. I love it. Um, the power of now. I have that book. I love that book. You like the, yes. the power of now? Yes, bro. See, and I don't. I don't want to name like nothing like rich dad, poor dad. But everybody know those, right? You know what I'm saying? So the, the atomic habits, the power of now, and if you're a producer, definitely go go read that Twelve Notes of Life, the Quincy Jones. Mm. Fire. Okay, that's it. Right there. I hope y'all took some notes, man. This is the We Outside Show, We Outside Radio. The Honorable C-Note has been in the building, man. Appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. We outside. You already know. Hey, y'all go look up Bloody Freddy, man. Trust me. You're going to love it. Signs three, man. Forget what Freddy talk about, man. We need y'all on that <laughs> side. <laughs> we need y'all on that size three, man. That's what we owe. But yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and Warrior's Prayer. That's my highlight off that album, man. Go play that. And Benz, Benz. Matter of fact, let's play Benz. We on the radio. Go play Benz. We're going to play Benz right now. We outside radio. We'll be back. Yes, sir.